The revolution tore his education from him. Before he could even begin to understand the world, his childhood learning was broken, scattered like debris in a storm. Years later, the academic world slammed its door shut, leaving him outside the very field he lived for. But even when life stripped him of opportunity, even when he was making sandwiches at a subway just to survive, his determination did not bend. And then, from decades of quiet isolation, came a breakthrough so impossible, it left the mathematical world stunned. This is the story of Yi Tang Zhang, the man who proved that greatness can grow even in the shadows. Yi Tang Zhang was born on February 5, 1955, in Shanghai, a city alive with intellectual promise, yet standing on the edge of one of the most turbulent periods in modern Chinese history. His parents were both teachers, his father a physics instructor, his mother a mathematics teacher, and from the very beginning, numbers, logic, and quiet curiosity filled the air of his childhood home. While other children played in the streets, Zhang found himself drawn to the strange, elegant patterns hidden inside arithmetic and equations. It was subtle, almost invisible, but the early seeds of a mathematician had been planted. Then came the Cultural Revolution. In an instant, China's education system, once vibrant and ambitious, collapsed. Schools shut their doors, textbooks disappeared. Teachers, including people like Zhang's own parents, now faced suspicion, persecution, and chaos. For a young boy with a growing love of learning, it was as if the world had gone silent. With no structured classes, no reliable books, no guidance, Zhang turned inward. He taught himself with whatever scraps of knowledge he could find, one pencil, one tattered book, and endless hours of solitary study. Mathematics became not just a subject, but a lifeline. As political turmoil deepened, millions of young people across China were sent away from the cities. Zhang was among them. As a teenager, he found himself in the countryside, performing hard agricultural labor under unforgiving conditions. He was cut off from libraries, cut off from teachers, cut off from every academic resource a budding mathematician could hope for. But he was not cut off from thought. In the stillness of the fields, in the repetitive rhythm of physical labor, Zhang's mind wandered toward numbers, toward primes, toward the quiet problems that no political movement could remove. Solitude, once forced upon him, became the foundation of his intellectual strength. Years later, as China rebuilt itself, a miracle of timing occurred. The National College Entrance Exam, the Gaokao, was reinstated in 1977. After a decade of lost education, Zhang seized the opportunity. Despite years without formal schooling, he scored high enough to earn a place at Peking University, one of China's most elite institutions. There, in a world finally restored to learning, he devoted himself to pure mathematics. The halls that once echoed with political slogans now echoed with proofs, equations, and the return of academic ambition. At Peking University, Zhang's brilliance was unmistakable. He excelled in rigorous theoretical coursework, immersing himself in analysis, algebra, number theory, and classical foundations of mathematics. Professors noticed his quiet intensity. He rarely spoke, but when he did, it was precise, thoughtful, and deeply insightful. In 1978, he graduated with distinction, a quiet star with a mind already shaped by hardship patience and relentless curiosity and he carried with him a dream to continue studying mathematics abroad to step into a larger world where deeper mysteries awaited but even as this first chapter of his life closed marked by struggle solitude and early triumph one question lingered in the air how far can talent take someone when the world keeps pushing them down
In the early 1980s, Yitang Zhang stepped off a plane into a world that felt impossibly distant from everything he had known. Purdue University, vast, modern, foreign, was intimidating in ways he couldn't yet articulate. English was not only a new language, but a new barrier. Every lecture, every textbook, every discussion demanded twice the effort. And yet, buried beneath the confusion and cultural shock was something familiar. Mathematics. It was the one place where the symbols did not change, where the logic did not waver, where solitude could still be strength. Under the guidance of Professor Tsuong Tsiang Mo, Zhang began shaping his graduate research. His dissertation, titled Small Gaps Between Primes, circled a question that had fascinated him since youth, the mysterious spacing of prime numbers. It was early, fragile, and not yet fully formed, but it carried within it the seed of a revolutionary idea. Even then, long before the world would ever hear his name, Zhang was already charting a path toward one of mathematics' greatest unsolved problems. In 1991, after years of study, Yitang Zhang earned his PhD. But instead of a door opening, they all seemed to close at once. The academic job market collapsed. Positions were scarce. Universities passed over his applications without a second glance. His publication record was thin, his network small, his voice quiet and the world of mathematics responded with silence. For a newly minted PhD with decades of potential, it was a devastating moment. He had achieved so much, only to find that no one wanted to give him a chance. Without an academic job, Zhang found himself drifting far from the world he loved. He worked at a Subway sandwich shop, making sandwiches for customers who would never guess the depth of the mind serving them. He later found work as a bookkeeper sorting receipts and numbers that had nothing to do with primes or analytic number theory. By day, he performed routine tasks for modest pay. By night, he opened old notebooks and returned to mathematics, his true home, even if no institution recognized it. This was research conducted on the margins. No grant funding, no office, no colleagues to consult, no library access to the journals shaping modern number theory. And yet, Zhang refused to stop. In the dim light of his apartment, he pushed forward, alone, working through the deepest problems of primes with only determination and intuition as his guides. He submitted papers that were ignored, forgotten or misunderstood. He persisted anyway. The world had turned its back on him, but mathematics, mathematics still opened its arms. After years in the wilderness, Yitang Zhang found his way back into academia, not as a celebrated scholar, but as a part-time lecturer at the University of New Hampshire. The position offered no prestige, no job security, and almost no salary. His workload was heavy, his obligations purely instructional, and no one expected him to produce research. To most, it was a modest teaching job. To Zhang, it was a quiet harbor a place where mathematics could again live at the center of his life. Even with a full teaching schedule and little institutional support, Zhang never abandoned his private mathematical quest. Long after his colleagues had gone home, he stayed behind, working alone in silence. He was outside the research pipeline, no collaborators, no grants, no conferences. But inside his own mind, the decades of isolation were beginning to bear fruit. He refined old ideas. He pushed sieve methods farther than anyone thought possible. He developed new estimates for exponential sums, inching closer to a breakthrough no one else could see. Slowly, patiently, the pieces began to click. Ideas he had carried since his youth began to converge. And then, in 2013, Zhang did something extraordinary. He submitted a paper to the Annals of Mathematics, the most prestigious mathematics journal in the world. Its title was simple, Bounded Gaps Between Primes. Inside was a proof that would change the direction of number theory. The editors reviewed it, and in a mere six weeks, the paper was accepted. 
For a result of this magnitude, such speed was unheard of. Word of the breakthrough spread instantly. A largely unknown lecturer had just solved a problem mathematicians had pondered for over a century. The core of Zhang's achievement was breathtaking. He proved that there exist infinitely many pairs of prime numbers separated by no more than 70 million. Not 70, not 7, 70 million. But the number itself was irrelevant. What mattered was that it was finite. For the first time in history, someone had breached the barrier that had kept the twin prime conjecture just out of reach. The mathematical world had long believed this step forward required new machinery, new theories, perhaps even a revolution. Instead, a quiet man working alone had done it with a brilliant refinement of classical methods. The global reaction was immediate. Harvard invited Zhang to speak, and the lecture hall overflowed. World-renowned mathematicians praised the elegance, clarity, and originality of his argument. The Polymath 8 project launched to refine and optimize his result, reducing his bound from 70 million to a fraction of that number in a matter of months, all built on the foundation he alone had created. News outlets around the world picked up the story. Headlines appeared everywhere. Unknown lecturer solves century-old prime number problem. The mathematical community had gained a new hero, and the world had gained a new legend. In the wake of his breakthrough, global honours poured in with astonishing speed. In 2014, Yitang Zhang received the MacArthur Fellowship, known to the world as the Genius Grant. In 2015, he received the prestigious Ostrowski Prize, placing him among the most influential mathematicians of the modern era. And after decades of struggle, he was offered a distinguished appointment at the University of California, Santa Barbara, a fitting academic home for a mind that had reshaped number theory. Yet Zhang did not rest on his achievements. In 2018, he turned to another deep and haunting question in analytic number theory the de Bruyne-Newman constant. This enigmatic value sits at the edge of the Riemann hypothesis, one of the most profound unsolved problems in mathematics. Zhang's preprints on the subject attempted to push the boundaries of what was known about zero distributions of zeta-like functions. His bold ideas sparked scrutiny, debate, and intense discussion across the mathematical community. Even amid controversy, one thing was clear. Zhang was still willing to confront the deepest mysteries with the same fearless curiosity that had guided him his entire life. His influence extended far beyond his own published work. Zhang's bounded gaps breakthrough ignited a worldwide resurgence in analytic number theory. Sieve methods, once considered exhausted, were revitalized by his innovations. Graduate students flocked to prime number research inspired by the realization that classical tools still held untapped power. Entire collaborations, including the Polymath project, sprang from the momentum he created. Zhang transformed the mathematical landscape not only through his theorem, but through the possibilities he revealed. And through it all, Zhang remained true to the philosophy that had shaped his journey. He preferred to work alone, quietly, with patience bordering on devotion. He believed that real mathematical insight comes not from sudden flashes of brilliance, but from long, steady contemplation. To him, mathematics was a deeply personal journey, almost meditative, an exploration undertaken not for fame or reward, but for the simple, enduring joy of discovery. Today, Yitang Zhang stands as a symbol of what is possible when persistence meets imagination. His story rewrites the accepted narrative of scientific achievement. It reminds us that genius does not require prestige, that breakthroughs can emerge from obscurity, that brilliance can coexist with hardship, and that mathematics still has room for the lone thinker who refuses to give up. Yitang Zhang did not just solve a problem about prime numbers, he proved that the world's greatest discoveries can come from the most unexpected places and from the quietest minds. <laughs>